Lumix have just announced a new lens. It might be the world's smallest macro lens. It's a 100mm f2.8. It's part of the Lumix S line of lenses. So of course it fits right in with the other lenses in terms of it being incredibly lightweight and compact. It's capable of capturing some absolutely stunning macro images. So I'm just really impressed of how Lumix has been able to cram a really powerful and competent macro lens inside this tiny form factor. I mean, seriously, it weighs about 300 grams. It'll be retailing at £999, so I think it is probably the most expensive of the Lumix S lenses, but of course it is a specialist lens. I only had my hands on it for a short amount of time. I was able to bring it out on a professional job and it was enough to allow me to fall in love with this little thing. It has an incredibly close minimum focus distance. It's about 20 centimeters. So you can get this lens right up to your subjects. It has a one-to-one -one magnification ratio. Unlike the other uh, Lumix S lenses, it is an f2.8 rather than a 1.8. Now, that shouldn't really be much cause for concern because generally with macro lenses, you tend to want to stop down on them anyway. And that's generally just because you want to keep more of your subject in focus don't really want to operate with such a razor thin depth of field. One of the other nice little touches that the macro lens has is that on the standard lenses, you have this white text, but on the macro, it is black. Because you are likely to be getting this lens really close to your subject, you're not gonna be getting any bright white uh, reflections from the text on the front of the lens. I do own a macro lens. Um, it's this 90 millimeter uh, Vespid Prime. It's actually one of the largest lenses in the Vespid lineup. Um, and if you compare it to one of the Lumix S lenses, you can just see how incredible it is that they've managed to scale down a macro lens uh, into this form factor. So the Vespid weighs about three times as much as this. Uh, and because of that, this Vespid often gets left behind, especially when I'm uh, working on jobs where I've got to pack down light or solo shooting jobs. And it means that you sort of don't get the opportunity to do macro stuff. You sort of leave those shots out of the project because of that. And I think that is gonna be one of the main selling points of this lens is that it is just so <laughs> incredibly tiny. But for that form factor and size, you are not sacrificing any quality or features with the macro lens. I was able to bring it out on a professional job. I was doing a solo shooting job, a little documentary style shoot, and I was traveling by train. And because I was on my own, I had to pack incredibly light. Because the macro lens was so small, it was really easy to check on my bag and bring with me. And I think that is gonna be one of the main selling points of this lens. It was so easy and quick to use, especially uh, using it with the updated autofocus system on the Lumix cameras, and then use the touchscreen on the camera to set my focus point and lock it. In terms of autofocus on this lens, generally it works well. I did find that I had to update my focus settings to get the best out of it. So I definitely recommend increasing the responsiveness and the speed of your focus settings to make it a little bit more snappy. And once I did that, I found that the sort of control over the focus points and getting focus within my scene uh, was a lot more responsive. The lens itself, like a lot of macro lenses with autofocus has got a focus limiting switch on it. Basically what that does is it tells the lens to basically just focus within a certain uh, distance range. So if you're only interested in stuff in your scene that is up to like 0.5 meters, set the lens to that. And basically it just tells the lens to ignore anything beyond that distance. I can't review a macro lens without demoing some sort of product videography setup. So I've been messing around with a really simple setup in our back room. I've just got a new Godox LED panel that I'm testing out at the moment. Lumix S52X 100mm. And then just some simple little LED panels, beer can, a blue backdrop that I just had lying around. So really simple and easy to do. Took about 10 minutes to set up. I was just super impressed with what I was able to pull off in my spare room with minimal setup time. Uh, you can see here on the ultra close-ups with the water droplets, they're just stunning. Everything just looks so vibrant and moody and punchy with the lighting. <laughs> I love it. Curiously, I did run into one issue when I was filming with this setup. As you can see in this footage here, this weird sort of focused pulsing that appeared 
uh, and was most noticeable in my uh, sort of extreme macro close-ups. This seemed to kick in at around f8 on the lens and anything further than that. I was stopping down between f8 and I think around f16. I did reach out to Panasonic and had a little chat with them about what might be going on. I guess when you are stopped right down the, the lens, because it's got a larger focus plane to deal with, there's this pulsing movement to try and sort of just confirm and check what's in focus. I think it happens with most lenses and possibly with most cameras. I don't know that definitively, but it's just more apparent on this macro setup where you're likely to be stopped down. This would only really be an issue, I guess, if you were shooting video and you wanted to do focus pulls um, using the touch screen, like really simple taps to change the focus point. That's when I noticed it. Thankfully, these cameras have an excellent focus transitioning mode, and in that you just manually select the focus points uh, and you can tune the time it takes to move between those two points. And arguably, in a professional setting, that's what I would be using anyway, because it gives you the most control over your focus settings. Focus breathing is also incredibly well controlled for a macro lens. Uh, you can see some testing here that I did and it's virtually non-existent, which is good news for anyone, again, who wants to do focus pulls and videography, or who might also be doing image stacking in stills photography. It's very sharp wide open at f2.8, but as you'd expect, sharpness does improve uh, as you stop down and you get probably like true edge to edge sharpness at around f4 and f5.6 and beyond. Now on a manual focus lens like my DZO film Vespid, you obviously have this hard stop physical focus wheel that is mapped mechanically to the focus operation of the lens. Uh, with the Lumix S lenses, they are obviously uh, electronically focused. It's not a physically connected mechanical focus device. And you do just sort of lose some of that tactile responsiveness on a lens like this. It's not the end of the world, it's a minor gripe, but I thought I would point it out. One of the things I really want to highlight with this lens is just how well it behaves with the IBIS on the Lumix cameras, both the Mark I and the Mark II. In my original review of the Lumix S5, I highlighted the strength of the IBIS on that system when using it with the Vespid 90mm macro and how great it was for handheld shooting of eyes and hands and stuff like that. And this lens is no different. If anything, it's even better. So this really opens it up for using it for documentary style shooting, the sort of stuff that I do, not just locked off products, videography, but stuff where you're gonna be shooting people's faces and eyes. I was very confident using this lens handheld. So you can see with some of the shots I have here, shooting with Steph at home, um, I'm getting some really nice stuff with her face and her eyes, really tight close up stuff using the camera's IBIS and it just works flawlessly. The fact that this lens is also focused just means that you don't really have to touch or interact with the lens when you are focusing stuff. With the macro, you can handle all that on the touchscreen uh, of the display, which is a much lighter way to interact with your camera, uh, much lighter touches and stuff like that. I'm really impressed with this 100 millimeter. I think the main selling point of this lens is just how small and compact it is. Uh, and in that small form factor, you don't sacrifice any quality or functionality. And it's gonna allow people to, you know, create really professional setups with minimal footprint. Being able to just chuck it in a backpack alongside, you know, your other normal focal lengths means that you've got the power of macro photography without the sort of burden of carrying big, chunky, cumbersome lenses. So I think Panasonic and Lumix are continuing to doing a great job with the Lumix S line. They're not budget lenses, but they're, you know, within the realms of affordability. They're not marketed as pro lenses, but I think they give professional results. And I'd happily shoot professional projects using these lenses. They serve people who are stills focused or video focused or true hybrid shooters who, you know, jump between the two. And this 100 millimeter is no different. The lens goes on sale, I think at the end of the month, January. I will be including an affiliate link depending on when you're watching it. So if it is out at the time of watching this video, please consider purchasing this lens from my affiliate link. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but I get a small commission from it and it just helps me support this channel. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and until next time, see you later.